Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to another Monday Market Watch. We're going to take a look at the European market as we always do. I'm going to take a look at some cards that, well, frankly, I feel like fucking looking at and that's exactly why you're here, to watch what I decide to cover. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome aboard. Every single Monday we do these absolutely garbage Euro Market Watches and uh, if this is not your first time on the channel, well, <laughs> you're fucking crazy. But thank you either way for coming along. I do really appreciate your company when watching these videos. But I digress. We are going to get stuck into the Euro Market Watch for you now. Again, we do these absolutely every single Monday. So if you don't want to miss out on these in future, you should go ahead and hit subscribe. We do have some currency conversion rates up on the screen. Although I don't know how that will turn out when I put this on the screen. I guess this side. Around about here somewhere it'll pop up uh, but yeah we have conversion rates so that you can get an idea of what kind of prices we're seeing in the euro market versus what it converts to into say us dollars where the majority of my audience is from so hopefully that'll be helpful for you but i'm going to stop waffling on and talking absolute shit now let's get stuck in to the market watch so let me first apologize before we get stuck in in case there is any crazy noises in the background as always with these things i do live in a very noisy house it's very fucking windy today and i have a brother-in-law who is of the age where shouting is a regular occurrence so expect potentially some of that and also on top of that i've got two dickhead dogs who don't know how to behave but now that that's out of the way let's get stuck into the euro market watch we're going to start off with some of the cards from the new rage of Ra, the Marek pack that everyone's looking at of course this is the chase card of the set uh cards coming out with factory damage seems to be quite a common occurrence as we're seeing here factory errors left right and center we've seen this across a lot of the packs it's kind of concerning how this has continued to ramp up uh, at least certainly here in the eu and Europe I don't know about how things are in the US but on our market that's what we seem to be having uh, we're looking around that 250 270 mark for something in just good condition if you want something in near mint or mint from the pack you're looking at 320 and above I do think long term this is going to continue to skyrocket it's a ghost rare of well a really important card I guess you would say from a from an anime from a collector perspective from more of a casual fan base this is always going to command a high price now it will get even crazier if they go ahead and release, say, an obelisk and a slifer in the same rarity, which I could certainly see them doing and it would make sense for them to do in future packs. And that will absolutely boost the price up. If you do want to pull one of these and you want to hold on to it, that's probably a very, very good idea. If you're someone who's looking to buy into one, now might be a good a time as any, uh, because I honestly don't see these coming down at all. And as we can see with that scoop up in price, they've just continued to rock it upwards. And I think that that is exactly where they'll continue to head. Next up, we have the alternate art rarity of Ra. I am just, again, looking through a few different cards from this set. Uh, and this was one of the ones I wanted to look at. What the fuck am I doing, guys? This is what happens when you're an idiot and you somehow zoom in. My bad. Oh, fuck me. Right, now that we've got that nonsense out of the way. You wouldn't believe I work with computers, would you? Um... So we've got the alternate art rarity of Raw. I actually think this is really nice, and I've seen a, a playmat out there of this. Uh, I don't know whether it was official or whether it was like a mock-up of a fan-made something or another. It looks absolutely insane. This artwork is really, really nice. And of course, those of us who play Duel Links will be super familiar with this one because they gave it away in a promotion. But anyway, I'm getting off topic here. So 13 euros, 50 and above. This is one that I expect to come down. Um, the god cards aren't really playable, and I think the only, one, the only reason the other one really has any value is because it's a ghost rare, um, and of course will hold, maintain collector's value long term. Next up, we're looking at Egyptian God Slime, one that people are actually kind of a little bit excited about. Honestly, I don't think it's all that insane. Um, I don't even remember what it does, but I remember looking at it and not thinking it was too fantastic. Um, it's kind of cool, again, just an anime card sort of feel to it, a bit of a more casual vibe. Um, I think that the price on these will come down long term uh, as more and more packs get opened. Honestly, I can see this coming down much, much more. I think if you've got one of these now, it's probably a good a time as any to try and sell it. Unless, of course, you intend to play it, in which case, um, more power to you. Um, but otherwise, I would probably just try and cash in on this before the price comes crashing down. 
Next up, we're looking at Ancient Chant. I have no fucking idea what this does. Uh, what I do know, though, is that it was one of the uh, cards with actual value in the set, uh, at least based on card markets. So I wanted to take a look and see how it was getting on. We've seen it come right the way down from around 17. I think my trackpad's busted. I think that's what the issue is. Fuck my life. Uh, okay, so around 10 euros a pop. We have seen it come right the way down from around 17. Again, I expect this will continue to come down. It depends how shorted out this card actually is. Uh, and of course, we won't know until more and more packs get opened. It would be unsurprising, though, to see this shorted. This is tradition that in these uh, these side sets of these legendary duelists, there's always a handful of cards that are super shorted. And that keeps the prices up because, of course, people need to keep cracking the packs. Uh, and yeah, it's so on and so forth. Supply and demand basics, guys. Okay, so we're looking at Blaze Cannon, another card that I have absolutely no fucking idea what it does. Clearly, I've done my homework here, as you can tell. Uh, €2.75 is the cheapest for an English copy. Again, that is the standard we go for, if you're not familiar, by the way. Uh, English, in good condition or high, ideally near mint, we're going to look at, just to give you an idea. We could cover other languages, but then it would get real messy. Uh, so again, these are down to around €2.75. Clearly not shorted as much, because the price is absolutely bombed for around the €15 Euro mark. Jinzo the Machine Menace. Again, another card that I have no idea what it does, but it looks fucking insane. Jinzo with some, I don't know, Cyclops powers going on, just lighting people up with his fucking eyes. It's pretty cool. Looks pretty cool. I imagine it's probably terrible to play, but there you go. One euro and 80 towards the two euro mark is pretty much the average. And then, of course, you go beyond that. We have seen this again come right the way down from that 20 euro mark. I think a lot of these early prices, of course, are people just expecting that these will be shorted out. Uh, and that's clearly not the case here because the price has absolutely bombed. Whether Jinzo will be a viable deck type or not is a, an entirely different matter. Um, but the casual fans will love this. And, of course, Jinzo decks are kind of fun to play with. Uh, one of my good, well, my best friend for sure. When he used to play, he used to absolutely love his Jinzo deck uh, before we realized that you can't mill Jinzo Returner off car, uh, card trooper and get to summon Jinzo from grave. We didn't really understand about missed timing back then, but there you go. Look what they did to my boy Mikura. They've absolutely fucking mullered this card with the Arata. They've absolutely ruined it. Um, I don't think it was really that good in the modern game anyway before the Arata, but... Uh, you know, they're going to do what they're going to do. Uh, a bit of a shame, really, because it just absolutely kills the kind of... The, the classic feel to the card and how broken it was. And now you can get them for measly two cents a pop. And honestly, it's not going to budge anywhere from there. This card is now basically unplayable. On to Plague Spreader Zombie, the ultimate rares. You're looking at these again. The prices got absolutely through the roof. At one point, we were looking at first eds in near mint. We're closer to the 150 euro mark. Uh, and then unlimbs were looking 35 euros and above. So let's see how they're getting on. Of course, a good condition one still around that mark. 30 euros for an unlimb, so they have come down very slightly. If you want to head towards the first editions, you are still... In fact, you're looking even higher now. Jeez, these have continued to come up. Uh, as expected, of course, the cheaper versions disappearing off the market. You can still get a near mint, though, if you don't mind unlimbs for around that 30 euro mark, which isn't too bad for a card that you kind of need to play in a lot of combo decks. But necessarily, long term, this is not going to hold value. This is not something you're going to make money off uh, unless you already had copies. You are likely to make some sort of loss on buying into this card unless you intend to just play it for the long term. And I want to continue looking at some of the more meta-relevant cards from the last couple of formats and just see how they're getting on. Eldritch the Golden Lord. Uh, I still keep seeing these rumours about Eldritch getting reprinted in the gold set. I don't know if that's been confirmed or denied yet, but they are still a solid €95 Euros a pop and above here, which is kind of weird to me because it seems to have disappeared slightly off the face of the earth from at least what I'm seeing, but maybe that's just a lack of events that I'm seeing. It's kind of uh, giving me a bit of bias, but 95 euros is coming down very slightly, and I expect this to continue to travel downward over time. Adamantope, a researcher, obviously coming all the way down around 30 euros to 35 if you want something in near mint, regardless of whether it's Unlim or first edition. Uh, unsurprising, really, since Block got hit, this deck has kind of disappeared. I don't think it's by any means unplayable. There'll be people out there, of course, who argue that it's still very much playable. The problem is, is that Block Dragon just kept allowing it to access extenders, so... It meant that it could just play through more interrupts or put up an even bigger board. So if it did get stopped, it would just resolve Block Dragon, get all the extenders it needed, and start the entire fucking thing again. And that is where it's been really, really hit. So it's become a little bit more of a glass cannon, which is absolutely fine. I think that's how the majority of combo decks should be if they want to be a bit more balanced and fair. But really, it just gives way absolutely to Infernoble and Dragon Link at the moment, which are just straight fucking better. Uh, hand knowledge, ripping cards, all of that good stuff happens with the other two. You 
you don't get any of that with this version of uh, any of the combo decks. And so, of course, naturally, it's falling out of favor and tumbling down in price. If this is something you wanted to buy into, I expect the price will continue to creep down. So maybe hold out a little bit longer and you'll be able to pick up yourself a play set for probably the price you could pick up two for at this moment in time. So continuing with the meta relevant cards, we're looking at Linkross, which just continues to travel up with the price trend is 25 euros. The 30 day price average is 18, but we are seeing them at a minimum of 20 euros to 25 euros a pop. They're all disappearing at that lower end and heading on the way up. This card still hasn't been hit since so around until at least December. Uh, and yeah, I, I don't know if they'll even hit it then. You would hope so. You would hope the Halka Fibrax will go then too. If you're uh, any kind of real person, that's what you'd want, but who knows? I mean, maybe they'll keep it round. I guess they could do another print of it and uh, keep selling that product. It wouldn't altogether surprise me if this doesn't go anywhere in the next few months. Speaking of which, we're looking at Christian Halka Firax, a card that just also doesn't seem to disappear. This yo-yos a lot because people keep anticipating it's going to get hit or, you know, it's going to not be relevant or people are going to start maining a lot of ways to deal with it, such as hand traps, which has happened. But seriously, the card, if it just resolves, you, I mean, you win. Like, if you if it resolves, they've got no response, you win. Um, and that is why we're seeing the price still keeping up there. It could quite easily have come much further down. It's now sat around that 20 euro mark. Cheapest you can get it for is 18 50 again don't be surprised if we start to disappear around here over the next week or two and then hold out a little bit higher over the coming months Onto another bullshit card that probably should be banned, Smoke Grenade of the Thief. We're going to look at both versions here. Of course, that price continues to rise up. Just that hand knowledge, being able to rip cards out of the opponent's hand. Something near mint, 25 euros and above. That's actually insane. Something in good condition. Far more popular, of course, in good condition because, well, it's a really old card that people don't really have access to. I really like the fact that it still says Magic Card in it, which is really, really nice for this particular print. Uh, I personally would go for this one over the other. But €25 Euros is about the going rate if you want something near mint. Or, of course, you can get it for about €10 Euros cheaper if you don't mind a slightly lower condition, but probably still playable. And then we move on to our other print, which again, it seems to be higher in price. I think that these are much, much rarer, despite the fact that they are, um, you know, the spell card, a reprinted version of the card. Um, this set was like a weirdly short printed one. There's loads of cards that are just weirdly expensive from dark beginning um, sets. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. 20 euros at a minimum. In fact, these are almost disappeared here entirely. 20 euros is the minimum. If you want something near mint, you can go for one that's like 21. Otherwise, it's 28 euros and above. And then continuing on with bullshit cards, of course, Violon Cube here. Poor guy, never saw any play until recently, and now the dual terminal version is shooting up and up and up. The price trend has been around €7, Euros, but you can get them at a minimum of €12, Euros, which tells you everything you need to know. Starts to disappear at the bottom end, although there is a cheaper alternative if you're so inclined, and we'll take a look at it now. And this is the cheaper alternative, around €4 Euros a pop, if you don't mind getting it in a lower rarity. Um, you can get them in near mint for around €4, Euros, or of course you want something first edition. In fact, there's not really any difference in price there. Uh, again, this is a cheap, much cheaper version. The DT ones will hold better value long term. Although I honestly think that once uh, we see these combo decks at the moment that are playing the likes of Smoke Grenade disappear, you'll see this card start to shoot down. A card that I don't really understand why it's come off the list, kind of annoying if I'm honest. Uh, again, more hand knowledge, more ripping of cards, seems to be the theme of the modern format. And people thought Gomblar was dealt with, well, in the modern game of Yu-Gi-Oh, you don't even need Gomblar to fuck your opponent. We're seeing Gus Kraken here, going at around that €7.50, something near mint, you're looking at minimum of 10 uh, and those are first editions, so that's not too bad. This is the secret rare version. Uh, we also have the DT version, which we'll take a look at momentarily. And the DT version is going through the roof, a minimum of 20 euros. There's only four available, well, four sellers that have got them on here. There's a few more copies available. But if you want something in in DT, you are looking at a minimum of 20 euros a pop. And again, don't be surprised if you see these disappear relatively soon. And then these prices start to creep up towards that 25 mark. They have gone up insane right the way from 7 euros all the way up to 20 plus. Back onto the violent cards here. We're looking at Sphere. We do have a DT one, which we're going to look at in a moment. These prices have started to come down very slightly. Uh, I expect that they will come down a little bit more long term, especially once things like Smoke Grenade get hit on the list. But it is still here for at least another format. So we are seeing these around the 250 mark and then upwards as you go further down. And let's go ahead and look at the DT version. And the DT versions are a minimum of €9. Euros. They used to be... Look at this. This is insane when you think about it, really. I mean, that is all the way back to 2018. But if we look here, 
Just five months ago, this was a 45 cent card in, in, in dual terminal rarity. And then they shot all the way up. And now they're a solid nine euros a pop. And again, don't be surprised if you see these ones disappear and it then sits around that 20 euro mark. Being a DT card, usually they would hold some sort of semblance of value. Well, this one didn't before, it probably will now. And continuing through the meta relevant cards, looking at the Deer Servant, which overall has come down very slightly. At one point, they were 70 plus euros. We're now seeing them at 55, although that is the last copy of that price. You're then looking at 70 plus beyond there. This card is still absolutely insane. This engine is wild it's so so consistent um honestly i think in a lot of ways i'd liken it to the salaman great engine in the um it's just that same consistent one or two interrupts that you always end on but it's what you back it up with that makes it absolutely insane it's super consistent and the fact that you can throw about a gazillion of fucking hand traps around it and just make it absolutely wild is why this is so playable and also the fact that the engine is small and super splashable as well it's a really really favorite card of mine at the moment playing this deck uh, and 55 euros is the minimum you'll get it for. Look at other broken cards from around the same sort of set. Triple Tactics Talent, 73 euros and upwards. This is really holding its value better than I expected. I thought that this would start to come down. It hasn't really moved too much. It has very slightly, but honestly, still over that 70 euro mark is, is pretty wild. In fact, there's only one at 73, and then beyond that, you are closer to the 80 mark. So uh, kind of crazy to me, but of course, it is a staple, so they are always going to have some sort of value. It is three banned cards in one card, so that is something also to keep in mind. I think people are starting to drop off on playing this still, but overall, it's still holding value because there are definitely going to be formats where this is absolutely insane. Next, we're moving on to Forbidden Droplet, one that continues to rise up overall on the trajectory. Uh, this 30-day price average is 68, but it's now up to 73, 74 mark. Uh, again, slowly creeping up. Absolutely insane. Uh, it wins games on its own. Just switching off cards, meaning that they can't respond. Half in attacks is really, really relevant. It gets cards off your field sometimes, which can help if you're getting clogged up a little bit. Um, it's just a really, really good card. The fact that it's a quick play as well just makes it even more insane. Again, a really important card. One I think people need to have access to because it is so generic and so staple-like. One that you want in your collection. And I think even at this price, it's still very, very good. Next up, we're looking at Dark Dragoon. Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, in fact. Uh, 33 euros at a minimum, going towards a 35 mark overall. The price trend is 37 euros. The fact that they are down a little bit, it kind of gives you the idea that probably they're going to continue to creep down. There are a lot of decks, so this is actually just really surplus to requirements. I understand that it's very strong, but running effectively three bricks in a lot of decks can really, really hurt you. In fact, I would wager that I probably lose more games by bricking on the bricks in the deck than I win with Dragoon. Dragoon is insane once it hits the board, but in a lot of decks it really is just surplus to requirements, and I think that that is why we're starting to see it come down a little bit. I don't think it's really warped the meta the way that people thought it would, at least not yet. That may change in future, but at the moment it's still very, very strong, but not quite as defining as we thought it might be. I think we're much better prepared for it, uh, and I think the player is a little bit more pragmatic. The, the combo decks are just way too strong, and this doesn't really deal with them in any meaningful way, so something to just keep in mind, and that might be why the price is starting to come down. And his partner in crime, Predaplant Vert Anaconda, slowly starting to creep back down. This is one that I anticipated would go up, and I was correct to say so. However, we have started to see this dip down a little bit again, where people are probably starting to abandon that way of playing. But for the decks that do need it, it is keeping the price from tanking, absolutely. It's a really, really important part of that setup. And of course, it has other applications if you want to go into other cards, such as Super Poly and things like that. It's something that could be really, really useful. I think that this is one of those cards where it is going to be format to format. It's going to be relevant or irrelevant. So for example, next format, it could be absolutely fucking useless. And then the format afterwards going to be really, really good. Ice Dragon's Prison continues to climb up since it had that debut uh, on stream. We have continued to see this absolutely continue to rock it up. Around 11 euros, 50 is the cheapest, 12 and then 14. And then beyond that, we are a minimum of 15 euros and upwards for the most part. So again, expect these to disappear at this lower end and shoot up. Overall, again, the trajectory is upward, so expect to continue to see it rising up. 
And then middle Narcosaur, another card that continues to just creep up. It has plateaued a little bit, but they're now 52 euros a pop. At one point, these were 30 euros. When I got mine, I think I paid something around a 35 mark uh, at a ballpark. But now they've gone all the way up. This deck is actually really, really strong. Aside from the fact that Sam went and bossed that tournament with it, this deck is absolutely wild. It does burn out of resources really quick, but usually it puts the opponent in the ground before it gets there. So this card is an absolutely insane card. And again, one that you absolutely need if you're planning to play dinos and next up we're looking at access code talker which continues to go higher and higher this wins games on its own it's power crab borrow sword in almost every single way in fact think of borrow sword and dark arm dragon splat the fuckers together and then you've got access code talker 82 euros is the minimum most of them are sat around that 90 euro and above mark uh, for the most part or just underneath and again expect this to continue to rise up for the foreseeable there's no reprint on the horizon at least not for so some time now so again expect this to continue to creep up particularly Particularly if competitive tournaments start to come back in a physical sense in the next few months. And I just wanted to round off with three cards looking at something like PK Fire or, you know, variants of that and things that people are playing. Of course, Phantom Knight starting to see play again. Rusty Bodish overall has come back down again. At one point, it hit around that €5 euro mark. We've now seen it around €2.30, which is not a bad return considering at one point you could probably pick them up for a euro. That's a, a, a doubling of your money is not too bad, to be fair, especially if you've got many, many copies of this. And at one point, you probably would have taken advantage and sold these for way over the €15 euro mark particularly on eBay again. Starting to come down slowly, but they will still maintain some value because they are being swept up by people who want to kind of play and test out this engine again and see if it's relevant in the modern format. And continuing along those lines, we're looking at Fogblade, which has kind of come down just a little bit. Around the €8 euro mark, but the price trend was towards that 11 20 mark, as we can see there. And of course, you can get them from €8 Euros now. So they have overall come down a little bit, but I do expect that they won't come down much more than this. This is the highest rarity that's available, so people will still want to have access to this. Cherubini, absolutely one of my favorite cards, and uh, I'm actually quite surprised to see it at such a low price. I do think that it's probably going to go up at some point. I know it's had the reprint, but again, people will want that higher original rarity. Not so long ago, it was towards that €8 euro mark. I can easily see this going back up towards a 10 in the coming formats, particularly if PK Fire, Orcus, or any of those variants like 3 Axis and things like that start to take off. I think this is a really, really solid pickup to consider thinking about so something to just keep in mind for us to round off this euro market watch and that is all for today's monday euro market watch thank you very much for coming along hopefully you've really enjoyed the content if you have you should definitely hit subscribe so you don't miss out on this kind of absolute garbage in future i do again really appreciate you coming along and watching this far at least you absolute <laughs> loser to make it to the end of the video whatever but this is not the only kind of content we do on the channel. We do deck profiles. We do how to play videos. We do combo tutorials really badly sometimes. Uh, we do all kinds of good stuff that you YouTubers are supposed to do. And we don't do any kind of clickbait, which is kind of a nice thing. So you get a rough idea of what you're in for when you get stuck in to the video. Either way, thank you very much for coming along and for making it this far. I do really appreciate it. Uh, hopefully you'll stay along for the ride. And I will see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.